Uh, this week we're going to start with a brand new Adobe product. For the first time on Photo Walkthrough, I'm going to show you Lightroom, which is Adobe's new companion product to Photoshop. And I do so with apologies to those of you that I know haven't got it yet. It's a good product, it has become part of my photography work show, so bearing that in mind, and bearing in mind that this is not a sponsored endorsement, I do recommend getting it. So here goes. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Um, now, as you can see, I'm working at 800 by 600, so I've got a couple of things turned off here. Um, I've got my... Uh, we're, in the, we're in the library module at the top, um, and I've got the left-hand column turned on. I have the navigator turned off, because that at 800 by 600 just takes up way too much room. Um, so we've got the library. I've got the find thing closed down. Um, I've got all my folders. I've got collections, keyword tags... Um, and the metadata browser that um, uh, is right there at the bottom. Uh, not going to need that for today. Not going to need the keywords just yet. Might need those in a minute. Certainly not going to need collections just yet. So what I'm interested in is the library section, which is going to be where our um, previous import appears, and then our folders. So let's start off. Uh, oh, and I've also got this, this uh, sidebar here turned off at the moment. I can turn that on by clicking this arrow on the right-hand side. Um, but I'm not likely to need straight away the quick develop settings or the keyword section or the metadata or anything like that. So I tend to, when I'm in the library module, just have this left-hand column turned on. Now, usually in the library module, I also have the film strip at the bottom here turned on, but I'm just having that out of the way for the moment for um, keeping the, the view simple. Um, I could also hide the, the top bar there, um, which just gives me a little bit more screen real estate, but it's not huge, so I'm, I'm leaving that one on for now. Um, so let's. Uh, I'm going to just grab my um, my memory card from the shots that you've just seen me taking. I'm just going to jam that into the card reader, and um, like uh, CS3 uh, Photoshop. Um, Lightroom is watching for cards being inserted into card readers, so it pops up this Import Photos dialog. Now, I'm just going to quickly run through this, because there's loads of options in here, and, and this is your first opportunity with Lightroom to get as much right as possible and save yourself work later on. So, the first thing is this drop-down at the top. Now, I tend to shoot in, in RAW file format, as you know, um, but... Uh, we have the option between leaving them in camera, uh, Canon camera raw format, which is I use, I shoot Canon, or um, we can convert them to DNG format, which is Adobe's uh, portable digital negative format. Now, uh, there are arguments either way for choosing a format. In the past, I have tended to leave stuff in Canon camera raw format, but recently, I've decided that uh, DNG um, is as likely to be supported in the future as camera raw. Um, and is as likely to be uh, read by other other programs. So it's a really close call for me, um, but I'm, I'm now converting things to DNG format. Um, the DNG format has got a couple of extra tricks up its sleeve. It can store some processing information in there without the use of XMP sidecar files and things like that. So if I had to choose, and, I'd, and I have, I've chosen DNG format. So as you can see from this top drop down, I'm choosing copy photos as digital negative and import. Um, now, by default, uh, I store my photos in D colon photos, and then I have a nightly job that backs that up to another disk elsewhere. Um, so if I wanted to, I could choose a new folder there, but I don't want to. Um, it's also got my other options in that little drop down. We've got a little arrow there that allows me to choose folders that we've seen before. But everything goes into dphotos for me. And then we have the, a variety of options on how to organize these. Now, I, I particularly liked the, um, the concept of shoots that um, Adobe had from the, the earlier betas of Lightroom, which they have actually uh, since abandoned, but uh, in, favor of, in favor of simply showing you folders on disk. But basically, the way I think of my, my mental image of how photos are stored is in shoots. So today I was doing a promo image shoot. And so what I would do is say, all these photos, even if they were taken over a period of a number of days, um, I would still regard them as a single shoot. Um, so I mean, if, if you want to organize your your shots into a, into date folders and I know a lot of people do that you've got a whole bunch of different options on how you could you could name those folders there and you've got the options in the drop down there to choose from personally I just want to name it and we'll call it um, new PW 
promo shots. And that'll be the name of my shoot. And I just have a single shoot folder where all those images from that shoot go into it. And it's going to be called New Promo, new, new PW Promo Shots. Um, of course, I don't have to have that. I could just have them drop straight into the decal and photos. But that would be insane. So, um, ignore su just suspected duplicates. This is... Um, it sounds like a really useful feature, but actually it's kind of annoying. And actually it it doesn't really work if you turn it off either. Um, it's looking for duplicate images. So if you've got, for example, a RAW and a JPEG of the same thing, I guess it's supposed to pick that up and only import one, hopefully the RAW. But um, what it actually ends up doing is um, I, it seems to look at, at metadata rather than um, the actual bitmap data in the image. So if you've got a, a, a RAW file and a PSD of that RAW in the same folder that you're importing, because this is only an import feature, then what it will tend to do is it will only import the RAW and not the PSD version. So you can, if, you, if you're not careful, sometimes lose your edits. So uh, just be aware of that. What I tend to do, the workaround I found for that, which happens to fit my workflow anyway, is to, if you've got existing photos where you've got the RAW file and the PSDs together, you might just want to make a subdirectory called PSD or whatever you like and put the PSDs into a subdirectory and then this ignore suspected duplicates won't spot that they're the same image. Um, uh, because obviously it, it, it's kind of annoying to, to do the PSD version and then for it not to import it. Um, so we've also got another option here, Backup 2, which is uh, extremely useful if you've got um, a standard place that you back up all your RAW files to. But of course what it won't do is if you're importing files for the first time as RAW and then you're going to do some work on them and then you want to back up what you've done with the work saved, this isn't all that useful because this is only going to back up the original RAW files as they came in. Um, so I don't use that. What I do is I have, a, as I say, a nightly scheduled job on my computer that copies any files that are new on my computer over to my, Mac, my backup drive um, and that way, any work I do today will be saved tonight, and any work I do tomorrow will be saved tomorrow night, and so on and so forth. Um, so I've always got at least three copies of everything I've done, because that backup drive is a mirrored disk. So um, the next step down, we've got a file naming section. Um, and I do suggest that it's worth naming your files um, usefully, because later on, when you come to use them in some ways, for for example, if you're uploading them to Flickr, you'll find that the that the file name becomes the image name on Flickr, and so it's useful to have something that's at least recognisable there. You don't want crw underscore one two three four five dot whatever, so uh, that's that's no use. So you've got a bunch of options here with with naming templates. Um, you can have, for example, custom name, which is going to give you the ability to put in your text here. So let's go for a new PW promo shot. And we could have X of Y. So in this case, the first one would be named uh, new promo shot uh, 1 of 17. And it shows us just here in the uh, above this section what the, what the format will be. Um, personally... I've been using uh, just the original file number. This 1845 is just the next camera, uh, the next number that my camera assigned to that photo. Um, it really doesn't matter what that number is. I I'm not a big fan of, uh, of file names with brackets in them. This is my old my old geek experience in the past with uh, um, with Unix and all the rest, and it, uh, those things tend to tend to make me a little uneasy having weird characters in file names. So. Um, Windows handles brackets pretty well. It just it's just something that makes me uneasy. So we could just have um, a sequence number, and you can you can give it the starting number there if you want. Um, that's a pretty good way to go. I like that. Um, uh, you could just have a custom file name, but that's going to be uh, non-unique. So I think what it ends up doing is putting brackets and a number in it afterwards. So not buying you much there. You could have the date. Um, you could have uh, just a. Um, the file name as it came out, the camera with a sequence number after it, all sorts of options, and, and there is um, a file name template editor where you can do some fairly sophisticated um, stuff with file names if you want to. So if you have your own particular file naming scheme, you can set that up there. Um, I'm not going to go into that today. I'm just going to suggest that custom name sequence is a pretty good way to go. So this will be new PW promo shot dash and then a number. Um now, the next section down, this is another one of those areas that's going to save you time later, so definitely worth doing. Ignore the develop settings unless you already know right away how you're going to develop all the images you're importing. Um, 
these develop settings are useful, but probably not on the import dialog. Um, the next section down, uh, so I have that develop settings set to none. The next section down is your metadata section. And excuse me while I just extract a cat. There we go. Um, the next section down is a metadata section where you can automatically assign a certain metadata template to the files as you import them. And as you can see, by default, I import everything with my own copyright notice on it. But let me just show you, because this is useful. Um, so if I choose a new, it's going to bring up this new metadata preset. So let's put another one in. Let's go copyright 2007 photo walkthrough. Dot com, right, and that's just the name of the preset. That's not. So I'm just going to copy that. That's not. That's not going to put any metadata in. The metadata is all down here. Um, so I, now I don't want to choose any any caption information because this is this is going to be a uh, caption for a particular image. Um, I could choose if 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 you did want to import a whole bunch of images all with the same caption and label, you could do that. But I, I'm a bit. I'm, I'm not really sold on how useful that is. Um, but what is useful is this section down here, for example, creator. So if I put in there photowalkthrough.com, you typically would put your name in there. Um, and then we've got an IPTC copyright section where I can paste in that copyright notice. Um, all rights reserved. Um, copyright info URL if you happen to have one. Dot photowalkthrough dot blah whatever um, and then if you want to you can put your address in you can put your email address in your website if you've got one um, and uh, it's worth just quickly mentioning if you're thinking of getting a website godaddy.com is a great place to get one use our promo code walk one to get a discount of 10 percent on any order and if you're ordering 25 pounds worth or more then check out our new promo code which is walk2 walk2 that will give you 20 percent discount on those larger orders so um check those guys out they are a great place for domain names and um uh, hosting uh, and the photo walkthrough site itself is hosted and the domain name is hosted with those guys so definitely happy to endorse those guys anyway so moving on um uh date created again these are things that are particular to the to the particular image i i don't fill these ones in um i tend to leave anything that is photo specific blank and later on if i want to i can fill that in on the particular image what i'm looking for is um stuff that is applies to a whole bunch of images um and i think mostly um, these these ones here, the IPTC copyright and the creator are the ones that are going to be most uh, reproducible. So um, uh, fill in the bits of those you want, click the create button, and now in your drop down you've got a new copyright section. So in this case we'll import those with the new copyrights. Now another section here that you can enter um, keywords into if you want. Um, let's do, um, let's just put lens in there for now um, and promo separate your keywords with commas um, and it's going to any image any keywords that are already in your keyword list it will use the one that's in the keyword list any that are not already in your keyword list it will add to the top of the keyword list for you so um, it's it's a good way to start I do want to show you a lot more with keywords coming up so um, so hold on to that thought about keywords, but but this is a useful place to put keywords in as you're importing. Um, keywording is one of those things that is most people don't find the time to spend uh, keywording their photos, but later on when it comes to try and find one, they'd really wish they had. Um, so anything that speeds the process up, and Lightroom's got a couple of tricks up its sleeve that really does speed that process up. So I recommend spending the time on keywords, and in particular, I recommend spending the time to learn how to use keywords efficiently in, in Lightroom, because it will save you time later. So um, I'll come back to the keywords, but just bear in mind here you can put a couple of basic keywords in. Um, I don't try and put everything in here, and I'll show you why later. Now the next dialog down, render standard size previews. Um, I tend to leave that unchecked because I tend to go with the defaults that are set up in the Lightroom options. So I leave that unchecked. Now there's this other box down here that I probably should have mentioned right at the start. And I'm just going to drag this to the side because I know this dialogue comes rather too big if I turn it on. So I'll turn that on. 
we now get on the right hand side here previews of all the images that are on the card that I'm importing. So you can see um, right at the start here, um, now I told you while I was taking these photos that I was shooting at, at ISO 200. Um, after taking a few, and I was thinking this while I was talking to camera but didn't say it, um, it was clear that these were becoming overexposed. So after I stopped filming, I went back and took some more at a more appropriate ISO 100. That was still a sixth of a second, and I think I pushed the aperture up to f14. Um, it, it, apparently the lighting conditions are slightly different than when I first took this shot. Um, I did check out the uh, metadata on those original promo shots I took, and those were at ISO 400, uh, a sixth of a second, um, and I think f11. But these are um, clearly, clearly, it was a lot brighter today. So, uh, so these are ISO 100, uh, which is going to give me a nice quality image. I'm starting to wish I was going to be able to use these. So uh, there's all the images, and as you can see, we can tick and untick the ones that we want and the ones we don't want. So, for example, there's this one here where I took a shot without the light in my hand. It's completely black, so I'm not going to bother importing that one. It's just not going to be any use at all. I'll keep all these overexposed ones. You never know. Some of them might be rescuable. We'll see. And once I'm done with all of that, um, we can also change the size of these if we want to, but really a bit unnecessary in this dialogue. Uh, once I've got all the images I want, I've got all my import dialogue um, set up the way I want, I'm going to press the import button and you'll see at the top here um, Lightroom is now importing those files, it's converting them to digital negative and it's importing them to the folder where I told it to and the images will start appearing and what they will do is Lightroom will import them into under library here, it'll, it'll uh, stick them into previous import. So that's a pretty useful collection just for, it's like a quick collection, it, it, it automatically builds that. Whenever you import something, it builds a previous import quick collection and that will stick around until the next time you import some files. So I'm going to call it a day there um, and when I come back I will show you how I choose the photos I want to work with, how I keyword them and how I score them. And then finally we'll end up um, cropping, editing, and um, doing some final editing in Photoshop just to show you a bit of Photoshop integration with Lightroom as well. So I'll catch you with that next time. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.